Over 70 people are under police um, custody in Freetown as a result of attempted strike action on Monday. In Waterloo, for example, some young people erected roadblocks and burning of tires, while in Mountain Rural, some young people clashed with the police. For well, unconfirmed reports say four people died as a result of uh, live firing by OSD and military personnel at Moiba Community Mountain Rural. Well, according to the Office of National Security, businesses have returned to normalcy and security is watertight. Well, for more on the aftermath of the illegal protest, we have in the studio ACP Brahma Kamara, Head of Police Media Unit. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you. Okay. Um, how can you describe the situation so far since Monday to today? Well, for today, today is relatively calm, peaceful, and um, people are out and about, going about on normal businesses. And uh, Monday, it was this Monday, um, at some point, there were some, I don't want to say Lobalo, but especially around uh, Waterloo, uh, we have some guys who came out following that unlawful call for them to come out. And then we went into action, and then um, 60 were arrested. We did the same for Godrich. We also did the same for the Mountain Division. So in total, we have four for Godrich. Um, eight for the mountain division and then 64 Waterloo. So, but as I speak, the situation is calm, quiet, and things are going about. Things are going on normal. So, they were arrested as a result of what? Well, uh, the un unlawful protest. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, those who came out and wanted to protest, like they said they were going to do, they were arrested because it was unlawful. Mm -hmm. um, there is no document to effect to show that um, anyone was granted permission to demonstrate or to protest. Mm -hmm. So whatever you do with regards to that one is considered to be illegal, unlawful. So were they arrested with any weapons? Mm, not particularly. Mm -hmm. They were not arrested with weapons, but um, some placards, some made attempts, where some even said tars, and like I, you spoke about, uh, uh, how do you call this place, uh, Waterloo? Mm -hmm. Um, we made some wood blocks and um, they resisted the police. But um, the police was very professional. They were very professional and they were able to handle the situation. So arrests were made and then we have them in our custody. We are now going to investigate them and then um, take them to court. So, I mean, those who were with placards, some people say they were harmless, they did not have any arms to threaten the security of the police. They only displayed their placards on which they wrote certain things. So why would the police arrest citizens who held only placards? The fact of the matter is um, we made it clear before the 11th that um, whoever is intending to protest is doing that one illegally. And so if you now decide to converge in a particular area, what we call unlawful assembly as provided for by the public or the act itself, that it means you've committed an offense. And also when you have been given adequate notice that um, we didn't have anybody coming out to say we want to protest, we want to demonstrate. So we consider that one to be faceless because there was no organization, there was no individual or groups or groups of individuals to, to say we wanted to do this. So we were just hearing it on social media. So we came out clearly and we spoke to the people and uh, quite apart from that, we had a lot of en media engagement. We had engagement with ministries, departments, and agencies. And, and uh, some guys were in the informal sector, like Okada riders, Keke riders, and a host of them, and even traders. So which means we gave them adequate information. And quite apart from that, we, we, we did what we call, um, 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 we well, call it show of strength. But it was all meant to reassure the people that uh, we are going to provide a security and, and they are and they are very safe. Come Monday, which was on which was 11th of September, so we did all that. And so, if you are if you now decide to do otherwise, then it means you are flouting the law. And if you do that, then we should be made full. Okay, we understand that um, uh, a killing happened around uh, Moiba community in the east of Freetown. I don't know. We don't. Know, we are yet to know the amount of people who we are killed, but we. I informed that life was lost. I don't know whether it was a life or lives, uh, but I'm sure the police can confirm that someone has gone down. 
But I wouldn't wish it was some, somebody was gone down. We had a, a report of um, two deaths. Okay. Those ones were made to the police. So what we have done, um, we, we are now doing an investigation to determine circumstances. And that was even announced yesterday during the government press conference. But they were shot by the police allegedly. I wouldn't say they were shot. I wouldn't say they were shot. So I'm how were they I'm killed? Talk, I'm talking about the circumstances. Mm -hmm. So the investigations will have to prove. Mm -hmm. And um, for now I'm limited. I'm even constrained. You are they beaten by mobs or what? I'm constrained mm -hmm. to see whether they were beaten, whether they were shot. I'm constrained because the Right to Access Information Act of 2013 makes it very clear that for as long as it is a police investigation, it means that one has become what we call an exempt information. So I cannot prejudice the investigation to say that you are this or you are that. So let's wait to see what is going to be the outcome of the investigation. But the fact of the matter, lives you are lost. I have said that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have said that. For the videos we saw, um, KCP, uh, we saw some videos that the 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 uh, one of the deceased person, for example, we saw um, a hole, meaning uh, it must have been a, a, a bullet. Yes, that one is also going to help us in the investigation. Mm -hmm. So um, officers are going to visit the scene. Ballistic, ballistic officers are going to be there. Senior of camp officers are going to be there. A whole lot of people are going to be there. Investigators of different shape. So, so far, the information that the police have gathered, uh, how did they meet their death? And how do you expect me to explain that? When I told you, if no, I do that, no, now, I'm, so, I'm sure there are preliminary information. No, I cannot. I am not that you are privy to as, as as a senior police officer. Yeah, and I don't think that would in any way prejudice the. But I'm equally so constrained as a senior police officer not to let out what I shouldn't let out, mm -hmm. because if I now say, is it not in the guise of protecting your men? No, I'm not. We are not. Otherwise, we wouldn't have called for an investigation, mm -hmm. because if you don't investigate. You wouldn't know what actually happened. Don't forget, I was not there. Nobody with team management was there. You understand? So it is only by now conducting an investigation that we are going to know what actually transpired. So, I mean, the eyewitnesses, what have they said to the police? Because I'm sure there are eyewitnesses who, people who saw the, the incident, who saw the killing, they must have seen what transpired, uh, what happened before the individuals were killed. So, I'm sure. These are narratives that must have been given to the police, and the ordinary Sierra watching you now may want to know that. Yeah, that is what is going to lead to the findings of the investigation. So okay. what they tell us is part of the narration. Mm -hmm. They will tell us what they saw, mm -hmm. what we call this uh, um, um, direct factual. You know, what they saw, what they heard, what they felt. And then they will narrate those ones to the police as part of the statement they will have to make to the police. And then it's going to inform the findings of the investigation at the end of it all. What about the identity of those killed? The identity, they are Sahelians. Yep. They are Sahelians. Mm -hmm. What more and, do we know about them apart from all living Sahelians? No, I only know they are Sahelians, but I, I don't know anything further than that. I only know they are Sahelians. Mm -hmm. Yes, by their names. I know they are Their names? I cannot divulge their names, but by their names, they are Sahelians. Mm -hmm. yeah. did, did, did the police make any arrest after that killing? In the vicinity or in the, in the crime scene where they were allegedly killed? You know, it was an operation. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes during an operation, things are like topsy-turvy. Mm -hmm. But when, when the dust settled, you now have to go. This is why we've called for an investigation. The dust is now settled, mm -hmm. and they will now expect to probe into the issues, to determine who was there, who was not there, what did you do there, and what did you do. Who's so going to mount the investigation? The police? Of course. Are you going to investigate yourself? We have been doing that. We have investigated ourselves. Mm -hmm. But don't forget, we also have other organizations that could come in. IPCB, they have their own mandate. Mm -hmm. Human Rights Commission, they have their own mandate. But the fact remains, uh, constitutionally, we have the right to conduct investigations. Mm -hmm. Because when you look at the, the criminal justice system, it's a kind of tripartite arrangement. We are going to have the police as the first responders when it comes to criminal investigations. And then from there, you now talk about the judiciary and then you talk about the correctional service. So there is no way you can exclude the police. No way. So those who allegedly released the trigger, are they under, are they under um, police net also? We, I the know. officers who the people alleged did the killing. Have you identified so them? You're already conclusive. No, no, I'm not, that's, I, that's why I use the word alleged. Have no, you identified? No, oh, conclusive. Oh, have you identified the killers? The alleged killers? I said they were death. Mm -hmm. Two deaths. Mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. 
So that's what we're going to investigate. Whatever could have led to that one is going to come out of the findings. So, so far, I don't know who the killers were. I don't know whether they were killers. They were two deaths. And then uh, the findings of the investigation. But the deaths are not natural. The, the, those who died is just just fall and I do not have the I do not have the authority to determine whether it was natural or not because I'm not a pathologist. Mm -hmm. The pathologist is there to determine. They will tell us the causation because in, in those cases you have to talk about causation. So what caused the death? So we have to wait for the pathologist. Okay. So I'm not at liberty to say. Now let's go to um, Putloko in the north. Uh, it was also reported, you can agree or debunk it, that uh, one of the AIGs in that part of the country was uh, sent on leave as a result of what happened on Monday. Can you confirm that? No, I don't. The word sent on leave, maybe the, the adjective sent mm -hmm. is uh, what I'm, I'm against. Okay. In the so SL what happened? In the SLP, there are times when you go on leave. There are times you even apply for leave, but they tell you no. There is there is an ongoing operation. After the operation, you can proceed on leave, and so on and so forth. So you have study leave, we have maternity leave, we have ordinary private affairs leave, we have casual leave, and then we also have annual leave within the police. So he's proceeding on them. Mm -hmm. annual leave. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with anything. It's not like it's proceeding on annual leave. Mm -hmm. But not sooner, not sooner the, the, leak, the what happened on Monday than he went or sent on, on Tuesday. No, there, there were already uh, ongoing activities within mm -hmm. the SLP. Okay. So it's only, it's just, maybe it's just by coincidence. I would say, I would put it that way. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter, if somebody's proceeding on leave, somebody must step into mm -hmm. that particular position. So the sooner now he's going on leave, then somebody has been detailed. But there is going to be a movement. You know, somebody was working at the infrastructure, he moved on to, to traffic, and the man at the traffic division moved on to infrastructure, and somebody was with the DIG moved on to infrastructure, just like that. So when one man moves, especially at the higher level, you expect other movement to take place. So what it's just like they move, they move me now. So what leave is he proceeding on? It's annual leave. Annual leave. It's annual leave. Okay. Now, uh, eh, eh, um, eh, eh, see, let us look at the other parts of the country. Um, I remember August 10, the, the incidences that happened took place in the north and the western region. Uh, this time around also, the south and the east, we are calm, we are peaceful. Uh, but the, the western area, for example, the capital and so, uh, yeah, I think these were the, the hot spots again for this um, September 11 um, protest. As a police force, what did you learn? Well, it appears um, some people, in spite of the fact that we continue to talk to them, for them to understand, they are failing to understand. And um, for the last, for the incident on Monday, it was only Waterloo, the mountain, the vision, and Godrich. All other places were not affected. So, it, which means, uh, for August last year, we had Kamakwe, we had Makini, and some other places, Maboka. So the, 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 we, we are shortening the, 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 the areas of incident, affected, areas, affected areas. So uh, on one hand, you say people are learning. On the other hand, people, you say some people are still recalcitrant. Understand that um, when they get those unlawful calls to come out, they will still come out. So they are recalcitrant. But the others are learning faster. And they say, no, we've heard from the police. We've heard from the authorities that this is unlawful. This is it illegal so why should we come out so there are improvements but equally so some others are not even learning anything mm -hmm. so that's the situation mm -hmm. so we have to continue to talk to them maybe we now have to bring in the press like you've been doing continue to talk to them let them see reasons to obey authority to obey the authorities and to follow the principles of democracy as the case may be the principles of human rights because human rights people normally talk about human rights i have my own right as a police officer you have your own right as, as a journalist, and equally so we all have our own rights as individuals of the state. But um, they go with responsibility, and then sometimes where your own stops, the other one, the, you should now start the, to enjoy the rights of the other, the other individual. So if you cross that line, you are like also infringing on the right of the other individuals. You have the right to swing your hands. You can do that one as much as possible. But when you now hit somebody with those swinging hands, if you infringe on the right of that other individual. You see, this, so these are the scenarios and these are the situations. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the, 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 the 
presence of the police, the show of force on that particular day, many people say that itself uh, was a contributing factor of people staying at home. <coughs> well, Would you agree? I, I cannot make a judgment for the people, mm -hmm. but um, we are out because we are supposed to be out. Had we not been out and something else happened, we would have been blamed. So we cannot say uh, we are not supposed to be out. No, we are supposed to be out because the job we do itself, policing, is not something like this. Eating. It's an open job. We are all, you see us almost on a daily basis. You wake up in the morning, maybe sometimes a person we first see is a traffic police officer controlling traffic or regulating the free flow of traffic. So we are supposed to be out because we are to respond to a situation that has a tendency to derail the peace, that has a tendency to bring the, the entire state into dispute. So we are supposed to be out. So if somebody fails to come out because we are out, well, I don't know. But the fact remains we are supposed to be out and we have to ensure that we give we provide their safety, their protection and our, and, and to safeguard their lives and their property. That was the reason why we have. Uh, Waterloo continues to be um, one difficult area that the police is still having challenges to police. Uh, like uh, unlike other areas in 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 Freetown, rural or urban, um, attempts were made in that Waterloo to to come out by some protesters. And uh, people say even before the protesters came out, the police had a huge and strong visibility. In, 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 in water well, even with all that with even with the high visibility that they don't stop people from coming out of course we saw them and they came out and you know Waterloo is like a melting pot um, the good people and the bad people they all converging there I don't want to say uh, we have the greater number of bad people there but honestly things do happen within that environment that you do not expect to happen in some other areas. But you can understand, um, ex-combatants are there, they are living around that, those surroundings, hardcore criminals. If you follow the reports we've been sending out over and over and again, we've been nabbing some of them, we've been exposing their activities. So we have a lot of them within that vicinity. So sometimes even when you do the best you could in terms of policing, they still believe they have to do their own thing the way they should do it. And they, they wanted to prove to the public or to Sagalonians that um, for them they have their own way of doing things, they have their own world. No matter what we say, no matter what we do, they were still going to come out and they did came out. So that was the situation. So we we'll continue to learn lessons from that one and then we we'll continue to engage them further. Because uh, it appears we, we've been engaging them, but. Um, Maybe this time around, uh, we have to use some other means by bringing on board the traditional leaders. They have traditional leaders there. By bringing on board uh, opinion leaders and by bringing on board some other stakeholders so that we continue to engage those communities, those the various communities within the vast Waterloo vicinity itself. Well, let's go to another issue that we've been following. Um, the Ministry of Gender and Children's Affairs, Police and other Human Rights and Child-Based Organizations have launched an investigation over a social media report of alleged child cruelty by a woman on a five-year-old girl at Moritown. Well, the pictures of the five-year-old girl showed wounds on her face and body and a swollen eye. Well, the maltreatment of the girl um, led to outburst on social media. The incident has attracted human rights and child protection agencies and um, how caregivers treat um, their children. Well, um, let's now talk to Joyce C. B. Kamara, who is the Director of Children's Affairs, Ministry of Gender and Children's Affairs. She is joining us now on the live. Uh, Madam Joyce C., good afternoon. Welcome to the podium. Yeah. Welcome to the podium. Hello. Hello? Yes, I'm getting you live. I say welcome to the SLBC. Um, how far has the yes, ministry... Thank you very much. Okay. And from the ministry's point of view, can you tell us how far you've gone with the investigations on the alleged cruelty on the five-year-old girl? Okay. On the side of the ministry, um, we have been working with the protection partners and nine ministries to, and even the police 
So make sure that the child is provided with proper care and provide them for proper care and protection. Okay. Right now we have sent the child in an intensive care placement. The child is there and she is doing well. She is going through medical treatment. So today we are taking the child also to um side savers for treatment because the uh, she's having a problem with the eyes. Uh, okay. Um, have you identified the parents of this child? We understand that you only located her grandmother. What about her mother and father? Okay, well, this morning, the, the mother was here, and even right now, she's here. The mother and the grand and uh, the grandmother okay. of the child, and mm -hmm. uh, the child and grandmother, and also the biological mother, they are here presently. Uh, but the, I haven't seen the uh, the child father and a, a, a grandfather and the biological father, I don't see them. Oh. But I have seen the, the biological mother. We, I have been talking her. Okay. We understand the auntie who allegedly did this act um, is in CID. Can you confirm that? Is that CID? Okay. Can you confirm that? Yeah, they are with the police. Because the child was referred to the ministry mm -hmm. by the police. Okay. I have been collaborating with uh, uh, Lombi police station and uh, also Congo Court. Uh, okay, so in whose... So in, in the, the, the perpetrator, uh, I was told yesterday that the, uh, according to what uh, Lombi told me, the, uh, the police station told me that the perpetrator is now uh, in the custody of uh, CID. Okay. Um, the this child in question, under whose custody is the child at the moment? Under who who is who is holding the child for now? Is the child under the Ministry of Children's Affairs? Yeah, the child, yeah, the child is under the protection of the Ministry of Children's Affairs. Okay. We have declared, we have placed the child in an intensive care center mm -hmm. and we have for proper care and protection and also for her security because people have been going there to interview about the child to take snapshot shot of the child and you know that is from a child to child. Yeah. So we have uh, like, taken the child in uh, uh, an intensive care placement. Okay. Um, and we are closing monitoring it. Okay, before you before you leave us, what have the police said to you? Those who are investigating the matter. Uh -huh. I said, what have the police said to you? The police, those who are investigating the incidents, what have they said? Well, they are still uh, investigating the perpetrator is uh, with them. Then we are having the child, we are working in the best interest of the child. We make sure that this child is provided with all the necessary uh, facilities which they should be uh, But for the, the police are um, trying, they are investigating the matter, the, Perpetrator is under their custody. Okay, thank you very much, madam. I will hope that this uh, perpetrator will, uh, will, 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 will be faced with uh, the due process of the law. Okay, well, thank you very much, madam Joyce Kamara. Uh, thank you very much for talking yes. to the SLBC podium. Yeah, thank you, also. Okay. Well, she is, um, we were talking to Joyce Kamara, who is the director of uh, Children's Affairs Ministry of Gender and Children's Affairs on the alleged um, child cruelty on a five-year-old girl by her aunt at Moritown. Well, we keep following that issue. Uh, the program is a podium. Send your message to the number you see on the screen as uh, 03, um, 030. 073, that's the number you can send your text messages to. The program is podium coming to you from the SLBC. The number you can send your message to is 030 073 Now, SCP, let us also look at those who made these calls. Many of them are outside the jurisdiction of Sierra Leone. And one of the constraints or one of the challenges Sierra Leone has been having is how to bring those people back to extradite them to Sierra Leone. Is that something that the police has forgotten about now because of all the effort that have been made so far have not borne any fruit in terms of bringing them to Sierra Leone to answer to questions? You know, sometimes you say it is painfully slow, but uh, the fact remains we've made effort and we'll continue to make effort. But like I normally say, we need international cooperation for certain cross-border offenses. And uh, we'll continue to 
pursue that one and then I'm sure at, at a particular point in time we will get the success we are looking out for. Okay. Do you do you have a list of those say unions? Uh, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course, even though I don't want to give prominence to their names, yeah. I won't give prominence, prominence, but we have a list. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the capability to identify them, to know where they are. And um, even those within Sierra Leone, those ones we've been picking them up, we picked some up even before the the um, September 11 uh, protest, unlawful protest. Some were picked up based on their conversations. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we will continue to do our very best to ensure that. Um, Silo remains peaceful and then continues to be peaceful. Okay. Now let us also um, talk a bit about the uh, ban that the police placed on the 1st of September that boat owners should not ply the seas of Sierra Leone after 7 p.m. How are you enforcing that ban? Well, uh, we are giving it a human face. Mm -hmm. Let's be very practical and hopeful to this one. We are giving it a human face. Um, we did not for once ever said that people should not go out to fish. So they still go out there to, be, to fish. They can be out there at night doing their fishing. But we have patrol boats. We, we procured patrol boats. And then, then those ones are doing their, their night patrols. If they go out and then they see a particular boat, a canoe, it's just a matter of conducting search. If there is no contraband goods, there is nothing there you can consider to be of police interest. Then they allow you to continue to do your fishing. Mm. And then sometimes if you even have emergency situations after 7 p.m., you can come you can come ashore and then you can bath or you can anchor and then uh, why did you realize the ban in less than in, in less than two no, weeks since it was no it, it, it was never as rigid as people thought. Mm. You understand? Whatever you do as a police officer, you have to give. You always have to have the human face. Don't forget, these guys who are doing the fishing, they are also contributing to the, the that sector. So if you say you are going to totally disallow them from going out at, at night, then that one is going to be like yeah, you are also depriving other people, even depriving me because I also need fish to be in the market so that somebody can go there and, and get whatever. So. We said after seven, boats should not leave the wharfs. But say, for example, you are already out there at seven after seven o'clock, and then we cannot tell you, no, you have to leave the sea, come out, and then stop the fishing. No, you can still continue to do your fishing, still continue to do your fishing. And then at the end of the day, we are now doing our own patrols. This is why we have the, the, the capacity to patrol. We do our patrols, and then if we come in contact with you, we have to do a kind of manual search of your boat. If there is nothing there that um, is of police interest, uh, that, that has nothing to do with criminality. So how often, how often does the police patrol at sea? Uh, it is as regular as possible. It is, um, it is, we patrol as regularly as possible. We have three newly procured boats, mm -hmm. and they are out there, and they are doing the patrols throughout the night. I mean, you look at the, the, the stretch of the sea, I mean, three patrol boats are not enough to, to patrol our waters. But, but 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 they are helping. Man. It's just about twelve naut nautical miles mm -hmm. from ashore to about twelve nautical miles. They can go as fast to that point, and then um, we've been getting the result we want. We've not been able to t to arrest anybody with contraband goods, but they now know we are out there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, for those ones who are for the passenger boats, for them even before the ban, they've resolved that they must not go out after six. Okay. So we are not having difficulties with them. Mm -hmm. Uh, we only wanted to regularize the, those guys who are doing the fishing at night, understand? So I think that one is clear now and then things are going on the way they're supposed to go. Mm -hmm. uh, let me take you back to the arrests that we have made on Monday. Normally police will say um, when um, violence erupts, that moment everyone that is found in the scene is going to be arrested. But later when they are taken to either CID or the police station, that time they are going to be sorted out and who is uh, to be charged is going to be charged and who is to be released. Has that been done? Because uh, is that all those who are arrested are going to be charged to court? You know, in police, we have what to call them um, judges who are. It says um, when a police officer is endeavoring to detect the author of a crime, he has no objection to putting question or questions to anyone 
whom he thinks reasonable information could be obtained from. You understand? So, say for example, we go out there, and then um, that place becomes a crime scene. You can take as many people as possible. You take them to the station, like you use the word sorted out. Mm -hmm. They could be sorted out. The moment you begin to obtain statement from them, you now begin to determine who was actually involved and who was not involved. And those ones who are not involved, you let, you let them go. Mm -hmm. And those ones who are involved, because don't forget the law says, if you are alleging, you are the one to prove. You say you alleges must prove. So to take them out to court is one aspect of it. You must have the evidence to prove, to present to the court for that person to be found guilty. Mm -hmm. And so if you do not have the evidence, why do you take the person to court? So you are just like wasting your time. Because the, the owner's guest on the prosecution to prove their case be, beyond his name without. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the circumstances. So we do the sorting out. If you are not involved, we, let, we allow you to go. So, but sometimes you, you'll be there for 24 hours. Say, for example, where you have a very large number. So you have to obtain statement from each and every one of them. And then you now begin to say, this man should go to court or this man should not go to court. Or some of them have been held now for almost 48 hours or, yeah. Some could have been released, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. I didn't check that on, but some could have been. Those ones who are not involved, some could have been released. For okay, on, on August 10 last year, um, children were arrested. Did that happen this time around also? No. Only adults? Adults. Okay. Okay, um, as we continue to observe the situation in the country, let's now go to the northern city of Makini, where we have our correspondent Hassan Fore, who has been monitoring the situation since Monday to get Hassan Fore, welcome to the podium. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Uh, what's happening in, in McKinney? Uh, Monday, we understand few people went out. Um, on Tuesday, yesterday, life returned to normalcy, and I'm sure normalcy has also continued today. What can you tell us more about McKinney so far? Well, at the moment, um, um, things have gone back to complete normal. Okay. You know, everybody is now going about their normal business. Yes, yesterday it was fair, but today it's complete normal. Okay. I was uh, taking a walk this morning to every major point in the city, and even uh, the outskirts of the city schools are, are, are returned to full capacity. Offices are running, bikes are also running. Everything is just back as it was. We saw Monday, we are we saw a complete, almost complete seat at home. And then, of course, as you said, a few people are tempted to come out when the police are proactive and they were able to put a situation under control. We did not have any form of demonstration or, or protest like only a lot of people just sit at home and you know go about their normal. But uh, the thing is, it's all okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but everything is, is back to normal in the king. Are we still seeing police presence on the streets? Are police still patrolling or is just uh, like any normal day before September 11 on Monday? Yeah, well, yesterday we, we saw two police officers uh, still stationed at key points within the city, but today nothing. Except the, the only place you find police officers are the normal places where they used to control traffic, especially helping the children go to school when they go to the police station. But everything has gone back to where it was before Monday. It was only yesterday that uh, we saw two police officers stationed at the key points within the city. Did the police make any arrest on Monday? Yeah, that was why we got that yesterday that they made some arrest and um, our police a few calls to the communication person here he is yet to you know confirm that to me but indeed eyewitnesses and then some people in other quarters have also said few arrests were made especially along uh, the Lusa road uh, coming towards MP where uh, uh, attempts were made you know uh, but until we get that officially we, we wouldn't say that but those who saw said they made some arrests did they tell you how many people were arrested? No, not like that. And the police? We heard that when the police actually went to talk to us. Mm -hmm. Indeed, uh, I, want to, uh, I got it from, from sources that are reliable that indeed some arrests were made. But okay. so the police are yet to confirm that to us. And I will continue to, to, to talk to them and pray before that. I said, 
this morning, I'm going to get your response regarding the good arrest. Thank you very much, Hassan, for Reform McKinney. Thank you very much. No problem. Okay. Well, he is our correspondent in Makeni, um, Hassan Foy, who was giving us updates on uh, developments in Makeni. According to him, life has returned to normalcy. Well, um, later in the program, we shall also try to connect with our other correspondents, maybe in Bo and Kenya. Um, uh, SCP, you are talking about, uh, I asked a question that on August 10 last year, those who were arrested, many of them included children. But this time around, um, I don't think that was the case. Was it? No, no. Mm -hmm. No child was arrested. Okay. No. So all those who are arrested were adults. Adults. Okay. Now, um, it, it seems this issue of uh, after every two, three months, um, do people will be called to either sit at home or to take to the street is now becoming a pattern in Sierra Leone. Uh, what message is that sending? Well. Somebody will say send out the wrong message, but um, all of us to come together to kick against it. Yeah. All of us. Mm -hmm. Because um, for every city at home, or whatever you call it, it's affecting the economy of the state. I mean, the kids we have, or the children we have, we put them to schools so that when we get old, they will have to shoulder some of our burden. Yeah. And if we don't allow them to go to school, then it's going to, it's, that's why it's going to have a kind of ripple effect on the homes in the future and the country itself. So we should be wise enough. We should, we should be wise enough. Okay. Yes, if I need to hold you there. Um, we've been joined by our correspondent in Kalahong. Hello, uh, welcome to the ASLB, Sabu Matia. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. Yeah, uh, what's happening in Kailahun? Uh, did you guys have any protest on Monday? Has life returned to normalcy in that part of the country? Um, basically, um, Kailahun is uh, a good issue at this uh, moment, uh, as I'm speaking, because um, you know, the security, especially the police and uh, that of the military, and other um, security agencies, um, according to them, they are on top of the situation. In the sense, by providing the required um, security for the people of uh, this part of the country, especially Kalau districts, and um, related it to the protest on Monday, um, Kalau was not uh, part of that kind of uh, development because they said uh, they are not aware, even though um, things are very tough in the country, but um, they are also again looking up to the government because. Um, the responsibility of the government is actually to provide the required or basic uh, um, uh, facilities for the people uh, living in this part of the country. So, on that note, we said that um, they are not part of any demonstration um, in this part of the country. All they need to do is uh, to look forward to the government to see um, that uh, they provide what um, actually it is needed for the people of uh, this part of the country. So at the moment, I'm just from the uh, police station. I've been talking to the local unit commander, um, and, you know, um, um, Mohammed uh, Mary Kamara, and uh, he told me that uh, they are actually monitoring situation on the ground. And uh, at the moment, as he said, that uh, they are actually um, not too much um, having difficulties with the people of Kairan because they are actually seeing the kind of atmosphere needed. Um, on the part of the police, as there is no body of the police in terms of security um, and situation um, in this part of the country. So, I mean, so in other words, life is very calm and life is normal and is bustling in that part of the country. No cause for oh, yes. Yes, uh, businesses are, are going on. Of course, uh, you know, um, this part of the area, especially Kailau, the major economic activities of the people is basically um, agriculture. So people are engaged in their farming activities, both the upland and that of the um, inland landscape. So that is the kind of um, activities that is taking place here. So um, basically, life is really, really normal okay. uh, for the people living in this part of the country. Okay, before I leave you, Momo Sisi, um, what about the schools? Remember on that day, men, in many parts of the country, kids did not go out, uh, did not go out to go to school. Have kids gone out to school now? Have schools um, started full-fledged operations? Yes, uh, schools are in their own association. Um, I'm just from few of the schools, especially 
uh, the primary school, uh, that's of the secondary school. I'm just uh, one of the senior secondary schools here in the district, uh, national secondary school. Uh, there's a huge turnout on the part of the children, as well as the military secondary school, and some few public schools. Okay. Within the township of Maryland, you will remember it's really very encouraging. Even though um, it is a normal tradition that uh, when schools were open for the very first week, it's difficult for children to attend schools. Okay. Maybe basically for certain reasons, best known to them and their parents. You know, so, but um, since we got into the second week of uh, the exercise or the work of schools, now the number is uh, really very encouraging because I spoke to some of the school authorities, especially the principals and that of the, the head teachers, and they said the turnout is really, really very um, encouraging and very timely at this point in time. Okay, thank you very much, Mama Sisi. Thank you for talking to yeah. us from Kailahu. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Well, he is our correspondent in Kailahu, Mama Sise. Um, just like in Makeni, Kailahu is also calm. Life is normal. Um, we, we see, I think there is one message here. It's sent for ACP. So it says, is there any law against possession? Is there any law against protest? Is protest a human right? The people who were arrested, were they possessing or simply congregating? This one says the National Commission for Civic Education must live up to its responsibility to educate the public on protests and the role of the police on this activity. ACP, you may want to respond to the, the first question. Yeah, let me say uh, there is a law. Mm -hmm. um, we have the provision under the Public Order Act. Mm -hmm. Initially, it was Act Number 46 of 1965, which is now the Public Order Amendment Act of 2020. Okay. Section 17. Mm -hmm. It's very clear. Mm -hmm. That um, if you want to do that one, you have to notify the Special General of Police. It is just the Commission of Police, but um, by the provisions of um, Section 155, Subsection 1 okay. of the 1991 Constitution, it is stated that um, there shall be a police force to be headed by the Special General of Police. Mm -hmm. And so, <clears throat> if, we, if, we put, if, we, if we have to put things into context, it means the head of the police then. In 1965, was commission of police, but for now we have the inspection of police, and so you have to do that one, and then in writing, and then you will have to reply in writing as well as to whether to grant or not to grant. But that is what the law says. But most times the police do not do that. So we, we do not have the evidence. The last time I gave you an evidence of sludge. Sludge. Sludge is a very responsible that organization. That one, that, that one was in 2011. Mm -hmm. Now we are not talking about 2023. Okay. Well, SCP are holding their. Let's go now to um, another eastern district of uh, the district of Komno in the east. Sir Joshua Sir Petikoy, welcome to the podium. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, what's happening in Kono? Um, two days now after the September 11th. What's happening there? Um, is life normal in Kono? After Monday, the 11th of September, yeah. um, normalcy has become a corner district. Okay. Uh, specifically within the headquarter town of Oregon, normal businesses are all green, and normal life situations are, are all green. Everything there is calm. Yesterday, the church, uh, we, uh, I engaged the local unit commander. And uh, he told us that uh, they are in, they are over every situation and they are in charge. Of everything is normal and people must continue to do it. They are normal businesses. But uh, what happened on Monday was that the the state here, the state director here, uh, specifically the Kakao Police Division headquarters here in Kwebu, together um, uh, with other police and uh, personnel, they are on the streets or uh, to the streets to certify the public of Kono on the security government, on the security situation. And uh, that is restored confidence in the minds of the people of Kono District from uh, Monday, yesterday, Tuesday, the 12th, and uh, today, the 13th. Everything is cool. Normal businesses are ongoing and people are doing their normal activities at any other day here in Kono District. But we will continue to uh, engage the security sector as to what are the mechanisms that they are put in place in order to also um, prevent any any kind of damage and uh, or rumor as uh, how security should be maintained here in Kono District. But as I speak to you, everything is under control and not normal see um, in continuation as we speak. So Joshua, um, did people make any attempts to come out on Monday? Did anyone make any well, attempts? 
there were no grouping. Okay. There were no grouping, and no uh, the group of persons um, we are found grouping or uh, staging to come out on the protest. But that has ever happened here in common district when we engage the security sector yesterday i spoke to the district security coordinator and the discord of the, um, the office of national security even today he told me that uh, they are also be engaging the uh, the other personnel of both the health staff and the, the police of both divisions and call police division headquarters and the national police division headquarters and uh, according to him everything is under control and they did not assign any group of persons who were attempting to come out on that day on Monday or the, the other day that has passed which is Tuesday so everything is under control and they said we can get to engage the public of Ono on the why this is necessary and uh, what they, the assurance that the data needs to that uh, we can call police mission headquarters get um who is um ACP and having that is as uh is that as uh state sector as police as they will not allow any single individual or group of persons to disturb the peace of uh common issues or the peace of this country for their selfish gains. Thank you very much and that people should work out their normal business and report to the police of any uh the suspect of any suspected case of uh um uh something so we attempt to go out on the streets on the project which we can get police Thank you very much, Joshua Sir Petikoy from Kono. Thank you very much for talking to us. You're most welcome. Okay, well, he is our correspondent in Kono, Joshua Sir Petikoy. Well, we, uh, we are rounding off uh, shortly from now. ACP, the investigations on the, uh, the, the, the alleged killing at Moiba, and um, how long will the investigation last, and when are we going to know who the, who the killers are? Uh, when we are done with the investigation, and uh, we will call for a press conference, and then we will inform the public. How long? I uh, wouldn't give a time down to it. Uh, we are, we are, are the bodies being handed over to the families, or they are still... Um, uh, the morgue. Are they going to be handed over? At some point. When? I wouldn't say. Okay. Well, I think that's how we end this edition of the podium. Thanks to my uh, my <laughs> only guest for today, um, ACP Brian Makamara. He's been very generous with us by spending all his time here. Well, thank you very much, ACP. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how we say goodbye. That's how we descend the podium for today. Thanks to my guests and the rest of the production team, especially my dedicated producer and the rest of uh, the production team. Uh, that's how I say goodbye. I am Asliva. God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow.